We begin with breaking news involving a school threat at Bernie Champion High School this week. The Bernie Police Department has arrested a 16 year old in relation to that threat. We know the teenager is a former student. He's now facing three felony charges, including terroristic threat, terrorism and false report. This all happened Wednesday morning. Bernie PD was notified that someone called Champion High School claiming that bombs were placed on campus and there was a person with a gun on campus. Shortly after there was a second threat made at Bernie High School. The schools were placed on lockdown while those threats were investigated. Bernie Police Chief Steve Perez says, quote, it is very important for everyone, parents and kids to understand this is not something to ever take lightly or joke about. End quote. The police department is expected to provide an update on this case. We have a crew there waiting to hear from Bernie PD, and we'll have that information for you tonight on the night bait, night beat, as well as KSAT.com. The other big story right now, keeping our eyes on the radar because in the next few hours, the rain is coming. This is a live look at live cam, and you can see the clouds off in the distance. Some parts of our viewing area are getting rain, Adam. Yeah, thunderstorms and even now our first severe thunderstorm. So our strongest storm so far has developed and that's just east of Del Rio. So you see nothing around San Antonio. We've got one downpour that's headed to the northeast. This is this one's just west of I-35. I'll give you a quick uh, timeline on that. It's going to make it to Pearsall by 625 p.m. and even uh, Frio Heights area by 624 p.m. Anyway, that's this thunderstorm that we're looking at. Let's talk about the severe thunderstorm that's just east of Del Rio. The strongest part of the storm could have a hail about the size of a quarter and maybe a 60 mile per hour gust. This is moving into Brackettville and it's moving to the east at about 35 miles per hour. So we can time this out and before we look at other elements of that storm, see what kind of communities would be downstream from this as it heads eastward. We'll be a little generous with the time just to give you a little bit of extra time. All right, Brackettville, 6.13 p.m., so just uh, within about 10 minutes. Uh, Haby Crossing by 6.56 and Laguna by 6.52, some of the very small communities that we have out there. Looking at this thunderstorm by itself, I'm going to put it into motion so you see its development. At 5 o'clock, you were watching and I said, yeah, maybe a little bit of small hail in Del Rio. There was a little bit of small non-damaging hail in Del Rio, but notice how this strengthened moving eastward. And keep in mind, that's going to be the trend that I think we're going to see tonight. Development in Mexico or closer to the Rio Grande and then moving eastward and potentially strengthening and organizing as it moves eastward. The hail within this storm is basically this purple and black area just south of Highway 90. So that's moving into Brackettville, going to be in Brackettville within about 10 minutes. And we can get a quick special glimpse of that storm, just how tall it stretches and it's pretty close to the radar in Brackettville. So we may not have the best view of it because the top's going to get see how the top is cut off right there. That's because it's so close to the radar site, which is Brackettville. Nonetheless, uh, it does have this area of hail right here near Pinto moving into Pinto. This is the hail core and that's just a, just south of Highway 90. There's Highway 90 right here. This the main hail is just south of it, but about to cross over and into Highway 90 as it heads toward uh, Brackettville. Again, this making it to Brackettville. That hail core makes it to Brackettville at 613 p.m. We're gonna have another update. Talk about when this is all out of here. Have the future cast in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. They talked about specific cases. They also talked about punishment and policy. We'll talk about that coming up. Let's take a look at traffic first, though. Loop 410 at Fredericksburg. Uh, of course, you can see traffic is heavy out there, slow going in some spots as people make their way home to kickstart the weekend. Well, just days after we reported on the district attorney's relationship with the Wren Collective, talking about specific cases and punishment and policy, well, the fallout continues. Yeah, today we heard from the most senior court judge in Bear County, Judge Ron Ron Hell. He told us that he was surprised and concerned about the conversations in the hundreds of pages of messages we've been pouring through this week. We have shown you those text messages and emails that talk about policy, high profile cases and meetings with local judges. Most of the conversations about the judiciary were between first assistant DA Christian Hendrickson and Wren Collective founder Jessica Brand. So any conversations that they may have had about judges not doing certain things is completely inaccurate and it comes from an area of 
a lack of understanding as to what was happening at that time. The, the judges that we have are experienced. They've all been here a very long time. At that time, that administration had just come in. So to make some sort of indication that the judges were not on board with something is based on a lack of information. You can read those emails and text messages on KSAT.com. We have reached out to the DA's office and have asked for an interview with First Assistant DA Christian Henriksen. We've not heard back and no response from the Wren Collective either. And the judge not the only one with concerns in the wake of this KSAT investigation. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar seems to be distancing himself from District Attorney Joe Gonzalez. KSAT investigates obtained this letter sent by the sheriff yesterday. It is asking the DA to respect attorney-client privilege going forward and to keep their conversations confidential. The letter comes days after KSAT revealed those hundreds of pages of messages between Gonzalez, his first assistant, Christian Henriksen, and the head of the Wren Collective, an Austin-based criminal justice reform group. Salazar's name was mentioned throughout the messages, which included the DA sharing the sheriff's thoughts on how to possibly charge those people who arranged to fly migrants from San Antonio to the East Coast. The Wren Collective also received a letter yesterday, this one from an attorney representing the sheriff. The February 1st memo requests that the group cease and desist using the name of the sheriff and the Barrett County Sheriff's Office to further its agenda. The sheriff's attorney telling KSAT this afternoon, quote, it was alarming to him when he read through some of those messages, end quote. He's talking about the sheriff there. More on these letters tonight on the Night Beat at 10. Now to an uplifting story, literally. Last week we showed you this video, a man struggling to get down the stairs with his wheelchair. Yeah, it was hard to watch, hard for so many of you to watch. It was all because the elevator at his apartment complex was broken. And even after our story aired, it wasn't fixed until days later. We went back to those apartments today and we're happy to report the elevator is working again. Garrett Berger caught up with neighbors who are overjoyed. They have a way to get around again. <laughs> It was video that shocked us, you, and even the board chairman of Opportunity Home San Antonio, who called it concerning and unequivocally unacceptable. A man with a partially amputated leg making his way down the stairs of a public housing apartment because the elevator had reportedly been out for weeks, something we confirmed ourselves in a trip to Kenwood North last Friday. Nope. Well, no longer. And we have a lift. And lifted spirits among the residents. They fixed it yesterday, but today we start using the elevator. Thanks, God, and thanks, Ronald Wells. Opportunity Home told us last week that repairs had begun in early January. But one part was delayed, and then it was found another was needed, too. But yesterday, Rafael Moschiti says he saw the repair van. And later, the signs on the elevator were gone. Did you take a ride just for kicks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two or three. <laughs> just going up and down, make sure they were good. <laughs> meaning it was no longer necessary to rely on the stairs. This is a community specifically for the elderly and disabled, so even at just three floors, that climb can be a bit much. You can afford the back pains. <laughs> Some of them are using, uh, have wheelchairs, walkers, canes, and it's incredibly, it's, it's incredibly frustrating. Opportunity Home told us last week it offered hotel rooms to the people affected, but not everyone wanted to go. I stay here because I have my appointments and I have already the Uber, you know, to pick me up, so I don't want to change nothing. And now, there's no need. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Now we asked Opportunity Home how it will make sure that an extended outage like that doesn't happen again. A spokesman told us in an email that, quote, supply chain issues continue to impact our contractors' ability to get products, especially for the creation of custom-made control panels. These are not parts that can be purchased at a home improvement store, end quote. So we'll see what happens if it happens again. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. All right, it's an exploding community here in Bear County. We're talking about Alamo Ranch. As part of our Know My Neighborhood series, we highlighted its growth and the growing pains that come with it. The Bear County Sheriff's Office added a new substation there last week to address safety concerns. As our Daniela Ibarra explains, the county is now doing something about another missing resource. Outside of the hustle and bustle, 
Alamo Ranch is peaceful. That's part of the reason you guys live out here is because it's exactly. nature -y. Exactly. Jordan Wagner says there aren't many places for kids to play. It'd be nice to have somewhere closer. I mean, there's not anything close out here for a public park out here. The county owns this huge lot of land out here in Alamo Ranch, and we're right at the edge of it. You can see by this marker right here. Now, the county, they plan to build this park here. They just don't know what it'll look like yet. We need to make sure that we're serving the needs of our constituents um, with resources and amenities, and we need to be a better, um, just a healthier Bear County together. Precinct 1 Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores says so far, around $3 million is being invested. She wants people who live nearby to give their input. This really needs to be a community park, um, a community vision, and we want our residents to take ownership because this is going to be their park. The land the county has to work with is just off Tally Road near Medio Drive. There's lots of room to change, which Jordan says neighbors worry about. They like the nature feel of it. Some kids, you know, like to chase fireflies here. The trees are very old here, so they're very worried about the tree preservation. It's very hard to keep everyone happy, but we do the best that we can. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. The commissioner actually wants to hear from people about what to do with that park. She's planning an engagement event next week for the location and time. Head to KSAT.com. This corner, we got the monarch butterflies uh, representing the migration. Uh, when we're done here with the sky, we're going to have uh, 53, 53 stars representing each uh, person that passed away in the uh, event here on Cantana Road. It's a powerful mural being installed at Mission County Park to commemorate the 2022 migrant tragedy on Quintana Road. Three artists were commissioned to collaborate on this art installation, each of them sharing why this is so important to them. Parents are migrants, I'm first generation born. They all make those sacrifices to, in hopes of a better future. My parents came from uh, Saltillo and Monterrey, Mexico to come here for a new opportunity and um, I owe that sacrifice and that journey to them. This is just one incident. There's thousands, you know, thousands of others and um, you know, I kind of want this to represent the ones that are not seen also. Of course, this represents the tragedy on Quintana Road and where more than 50 people died, many of them in the back of a tractor trailer on a hot summer day. The Luminaria mural installation will be on permanent display at Mission County Park. If you'd like to check it out, please do. We'll be right back. This is all that's left of the Pedro Romero pedestrian bridge on Castroville, but not for long. Coming up tonight on the Nightbeat, how the city plans to do a demolition on Monday to get rid of the rest of these ramps, what it means for traffic and for neighbors tonight on the Nightbeat. Rodeo season is here and don't forget the Old West will come alive downtown this weekend. Join KSAT tomorrow morning for the annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Yeah, you can go down and line the parade route, watch as bands, carriages, horses, those famous Texas Longhorn cattle make their way down Houston Street. The parade is set to begin at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, if you can't be there in person, you can watch the procession on all of our platforms like KSAT 12, KSAT Plus, YouTube, and ksat.com. Plus, if you want to snag a free ticket to opening day of the rodeo, scan this QR code to become a KSAT insider. You'll get a free fairgrounds ticket for opening day, and you'll be signed up for all of our KSAT insider exclusives. That's things like invites to our Fiesta events and a whole lot more. If you don't have your phone handy, you can also find this sign up on ksat.com. And I want to make sure we point out the fact that all of this weather that we're experiencing tonight will be gone mm -hmm. by 11 a.m. tomorrow. Is that right, Adam? Yeah, it's going to be out of here before sunrise, so we'll be okay for the cattle drive. Nothing to worry about. Just a little breezy from non thunderstorm winds. Uh, winds do pose a risk tonight. They're one of the storm threats within a few of the severe storms that could pop up. Also, hail that tops the list at a moderate value here. Of course, with hail, it's localized, but also we don't know what neighborhood it's going to hit until it actually develops, until that hail making storm develops. Uh, it's impossible to tell you exactly where it is. We have one hail making storm right now west of San Antonio, right along Highway 90. This is moving into Brackettville as we speak. It's already into Brackettville and this purple and black area indicates 
The hail within the thunderstorm potentially up to the size of quarters. This is moving through Brackettville right now. It's a loud thunderstorm, of course, because of the hail and of the high winds, the lightning and thunder, and also potentially damaging. Now, the back edge of the hail is still a little west of Brackettville, and I want to point this out. Uh, Brackettville and 131, right in downtown Brackettville, the back edge is still five miles away. So you're in the thick of it now in Brackettville, uh, but the back edge of it is going to be through the city by 628 p.m. So you still have about 10 minutes with this hail that's falling uh, in the Brackettville area. So this is slowly pushing eastward and progressing along Highway 90. I took the lightning off, but you can uh, you, you know that there's a lot of lightning within this thunderstorm. There's a progression of it, strengthening it as it moves into Kinney County. This is head pretty, heading pretty much due east, of course, one of them that we'll closely be watching uh, here in San Antonio. As for anybody down the line from this storm, uh, say it actually will hit Uvalde. It may pass just north of Uvalde. But should it say turn south a little or grow southward, it would clip Uvalde at 7:10 p.m. Concan, you're not that far away from the heavy rain. 7:54 p.m. for Concan. Notice how I've left out San Antonio thus far because we really don't have much action. Uh, just some light rain around San Antonio. You know, this is fairly meager in nature. Just light sprinkles and a very light showers enough to cause wet roadways. Keep that in mind for this evening commute and venturing out this evening, but we're going to see some heavier activity as the evening progresses. Already some he heavy activity moving into Pearsall at the moment. This not a severe thunderstorm, but it's going to be loud crossing over I-35 momentarily in Pearsall and just north of Derby there could have some very small non damaging hail associated with it and up in the hill country a few light brief showers so far but notice some recent development in southern Kerr County here just south of Kerrville I anticipate more of that development just within the next 30 minutes to an hour to two hours we'll continue to see that development our future cast is showing similar more development as these storms move eastward I think we'll have this first wave of just scattered storms and then a little bit of a break around 11 p.m. And then we wait on the wind shift line to move in, which is going to kick up its own broken line of storms closer to midnight to 2 a.m. in San Antonio. By 3 a.m., it's all east of town and we start to dry out and clear out. Sunrise tomorrow, nothing but sunshine and a sunny weekend, but it will be a little breezy out there. Tomorrow we start the day at 53 at 7 a.m. Cattle drive will be in the 50s to near 60. Just a little breezy west wind at 15 to 25 and then near 70 in the afternoon with that sunshine. Sunday it's the wind. Very gusty winds and dry as well. So that's going to elevate the fire danger. It doesn't mean the weather or the wind is going to cause fires, but if there's a fire, it will spread rapidly, especially closer to the Rio Grande. Still near 70, so we're not talking wind chills. That's good. But notice our future cast for the wind gusts between 40 and 50 miles per hour by Sunday morning. So that's something you'll want to prepare for if you have any loose objects out in the backyard or front yard or whatnot. Next week, pretty quiet, a lot of sunshine. In the 60s, comfortable, nice batch of drought denting rain. We'll talk more about how much more we could see coming up at 645. Okay, we'll see you then. Thanks, Adam. All right, the Pelicans seem to have had the Spurs number so far this year, Mary. Yes, the two have met two times this season, and neither were great looks for the Spurs. But tonight, an opportunity for that to change. Here's rookie Victor Wembenyama warming up just moments ago inside Frost Bank Center, the Western Conference Rookie of the Month, might I add. KSAT 12 Sports Nick Mantis is there at the bank tonight to preview the matchup and to give us the latest updates on both the Spurs and Pelicans injury reports. We'll be right back. I personally think he should have, I thought he should have made the um, all-star game, but, you know, I think, you know, with our record, that probably goes into it. Um, you know, we win more games, he's definitely in there, but um, I don't think he's too worried about it at all. He doesn't really care about that type of stuff. Um, we'll just keep improving and focusing on what really matters here. Bummer to see Victor Wembanyama fall short of NBA All-Star status as a rookie, but tonight the focus is on the Pelicans. It's time for Big Board Sports.
For the third time this season, the San Antonio Spurs and New Orleans Pelicans face off against each other. On Wednesday night, the Spurs used a fourth quarter 21-2 run to try and rally past the Orlando Magic, but San Antonio fell short. Tonight is a chance to bounce back and spend Spurs fans into the weekend with a win. And KSAT 12 Sports' Nick Mantis joins us live from Frost Bank Center. Nick, what do the Spurs need to do to win tonight? Well, Mary, they're going to need to attack from the jump and utilize their depth when it comes to going up against this Pelicans lineup that's a little banged up. Herb Jones and Larry Nance Jr. are out tonight. Zion Williamson was going to warm up and see how he feels right behind us right here to whether or not he's going to play in this game. When it comes to the Spurs, they got Zach Collins back. He's been dealing with an ankle injury, so he's going to be back in the lineup tonight. But Keldon Johnson is going to be out with a cut on his left elbow. He's trying to get that sleeve to work at shoot around but he's going to miss tonight's matchup. This one is be the third out of four matchups that you're going to see between the Spurs and the Pelicans this season. As we mentioned before, those first two matchups were complete blowouts. But when it comes to getting a little payback tonight, Trey Jones told us to shoot around this morning that they plan to correct some of their errors when it comes to closing out games. Spurs. Just knowing that, you know, the things that we talk about um, throughout the games, that, that they will work, even even if they're not working at the moment. Uh, maybe shots aren't going in. Uh, maybe guys on other teams are, are hitting tough shots, and we just got to stick with it and know that because it's a long game, things can turn. Um, and we saw that last game. It's a game of runs. We're able to go on our own runs as well. And, you know, last game we saw that, we just ran out of gas at the end. So pushing at the end of games could possibly be the way that the Spurs team can start to build on the success that it's had over the last four games, having won two out of their last four matchups. Mary? All right, Nick, before we let you go, how do you grade the Spurs five games into this seven-game homestand? Well, Mary, I'm going to give it a B, not a B plus, not a B minus, a solid B, because there were some games where we didn't think they were going to win, probably the, the, that Trailblazers game, but then there was games like last time that they were out against the Orlando Magic where we thought that they can try to come, and, come back and have that win, and they just did not have all the gas that they needed, like Trey Jones was just mentioning, to get that win. Yeah, and the last time the two met, the Pelicans set a franchise record, Nick, with 22 three-pointers. So what will, what will it look like tonight? Will the Spurs be better at defending the perimeter? Well, going back to Trey Jones again, he said that they want to kind of angle their defense to push everybody and those perimeter shooters towards the paint if they can. And when they put a franchise record on against you, you kind of learn from those mistakes, and hopefully they can do that tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. All right, the Spurs and Pelicans face off tonight at 7. We'll be right back. We haven't heard that in a while. It's Friday, and for the first time in a few weeks, we have Stephanie Guerra back in like, studio for another one of our on the Pearl Picks segments. Yeah, Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Well, February is the official start to the year anyways, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> I saw somewhere the other day it said, what is January, your free trial month? There we go. I like that. I appreciate I'm, I'm that. I'm going with that. Okay, we got a lot to talk about in terms of events this weekend. The West is the best tour. What's that all about? There's a, a lot going on that's got to deal with the country this weekend. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have a friend named Nikki Diamond. What a great name. He's awesome. His, uh, I, that's I, I'm, that's his real name, as far as we know. He's kicking off on an amazing tour tonight. He is playing at the Honky Tonk Bar above Francis Bogside in St. Paul Square, so formerly known as Sunset Station. Okay. He's playing, um, I think the music actually starts around 8 o'clock. He's got a friend, Nick Garza's Get Along from Austin playing with him. Nick is amazing. He's played with Willie Nelson. He's played with Alicia Keys. He's oh, cool. right here from San Antonio. Um, I do want to mention, you know, it's Black History Month and Nicholas is African American and we want to support our friends all the time. Tonight's a really great night to kick off Black History Month and, with and, Nick. And obviously you know him because you called Nikki Diamond's Nicholas. Nicholas. Oh, I, so I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Nikki Diamonds is better than Nicholas Stein. Yeah. So, you know. All right. Lunar New Year block party. Yes, up. that's going to be a lot of fun. So this is a fairly new annual event that they started um, with the organization For Goodness SA. It's a Lunar New Year block party at Jefferson Bodega. So um, over at Jefferson Bodega on Donaldson near Jefferson High School, yes. right? An amazing, cool mom and pop bodega that sells the craziest international snacks. They threw a really, really, really big block party last year. This is the second year. It takes over the whole street of Donaldson. They've got 
food, drinks to celebrate all of the Asian cultures. Um, it's a really fun party. It's free admission from 3 to 9 p.m. So you're not just saying this is a block party. It yes. is a block party. A literal party block on party. Donaldson. You will see performances, the dragon dancing in the street, all kinds of Asian food, cuisine, drinks. Uh, you can shop from a lot of vendors, but it's a great way to kick off the Lunar New Year. It's the Monticello neighborhood, correct? Yes. Mm. Yes. It is Monticello Park. Yeah. Right by Jeff High School. Love okay, it. we have a tribute <laughs> up next that people can go and enjoy this weekend. Yes, yeah, so uh, unfortunately, recently we had a San Antonio legend, Joe Jama, pass away. Mm -hmm. He was a very famous Chicano soul musician. He was in the Royal Jesters. He made it famous nationally. Um, he recently passed away, and so a lot of DJs are getting together this Sunday at La Segunda Bartique and Gallery from 12 to 5, 12 to 6, sorry, to celebrate his life. So they'll be spinning vinyl records of all of his music. There's probably going to be surprises from some of his friends that are still, you know, with us, all of the living legends from the Chicano Soul area, era of the 60s and 70s. Great way to pay tribute to him. And though. this is Southtown. This the, is the in Southtown, yes. Yeah. This is right in front of Brackenridge High School. It's a really cool thrift and antique shop that's a couple of stories high, and they have music there, live music, disco ball. It's owned by a DJ. It's a really, really funky, cool place. Cool. I love it. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Tejano recording artists yes. are putting something together this weekend. Yes, yeah, so it's it's actually during the week on February 8th, the Tejano okay. Music Recording Academy yes, has a huge awards event every year called Tejano Mundial. So that is, uh, the, it's premios, it's the award. So Tejano musicians strive to win this award every year. They will be honoring a lot of legends this year. And then there's always the up and coming Tejano musicians. So it's a really great place to find out about new music and uh, celebrate our legendary Tejano musicians. It's at the San Antonio Shrine Museum, sorry, Shrine Auditorium, yes. um, which is up on the north side yep. um, at seven o'clock on Thursday. And the tickets are very reasonably priced and it is a really fun event. There's live music all night long and you get to be among the stars. And it's event season. Yes. You've got the Oscars, you've got the Emmys. You can dress up right here in San Antonio. Exactly, you don't have to go to LA. <laughs> You do not. No. The Grammys are tonight, but this is even better. Yeah, stay in SA. <laughs> okay, the next event I think could be hilarious. Millennial Loteria. Yes. Um, so this is a very awesome game that is out in stores. You can actually find it in a lot of local bookshops here in San Antonio. The creator, uh, Mike Alfaro and Gerardo Guillen, they're actually in California, but they love San Antonio. They have a lot of ties to San Antonio. So they are kicking off a huge exhibit in Centro de Artes at Market Square next Thursday, full of the Millennial Loteria art and cards. All of the artwork is going to be based on the game that they've created. So you see a lot of like Bitcoin. And okay, that's what I was going to say. Know. Give me an example of a Millennial yeah. like a Loteria Tesla, card. You a know, Tesla. they're make, poking fun um, yeah. at, you know, the latte I, art. I knew there would be some sort of fancy <laughs> overpriced coffee. Yes. There's definitely fancy overpriced baristas in there. Um, but Mike Alfaro has been to San Antonio a few times and really great friend. Um, and the kickoff is Thursday night. It'll be up for a few months just in case you can't make it. But the opening reception is free all ages. Um, and you can definitely maybe bring your game to get signed. It's going to be a really fun night. But I love the game. You have to look it up if you haven't heard of it yet. <laughs> I love yes. that. I would just I would just like uh, with friends say, OK, I'm yeah. guessing this is going to be one of those cards. I'm guessing this is yeah. going to be one of those cards. Yeah. And he's got different versions of it, too. Now, it came out during the pandemic and there's multiple versions out. So it's a really fun game, depending I, on I who your friends are. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I gotta check that out. Stephanie, we're glad to have you back. Thank you. Thanks I do so want to say happy birthday to my son on Sunday. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, if he's watching, he better be, you know, poodle pigs every Friday. <laughs> yeah. Your son's name? Jacob. Jacob, you better be watching. <laughs> Thanks Happy for having me back. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. Great to see you. That's going to be a test, Jacob. <laughs> Don't disappoint mom. All right, still to come, the University of Arizona on a mission to make change. What they're hoping a camera will accomplish in the next 1,000 years. Plus, if you live in San Antonio, you can score a free compost bin from the city. We'll tell you all about that next.
you're a homeowner in the city of San Antonio, you get three disposable bins. You get a black bin for trash, a blue bin for recycling, and a green bin, which is labeled for organics, which means a lot more can go inside that bin outside of leaves, yard, clippings, and branches like food waste. Take a look. Why is it so crucial to not toss food and paper waste into the trash? According to the EPA in 2017, 75% of food waste generated in the U.S. was landfilled. <gasps> Only 6% was composted. Food waste can't naturally break down when it's mixed in with plastics and other waste at the landfill. Instead, ends up releasing a lot of greenhouse gases, which is a huge contributor to global warming. So how can we fix this? Toss your coffee grinds, old food waste, and dirty paper products into your green bins, not into your trash bins. San Antonio is one of the few cities in the country to have a green bin organics program. That waste doesn't go to the landfill, but to a separate location where 50 to 60 tons a day are taken to be broken down naturally by microorganisms. To encourage this, get a kitchen top compost bin. By Googling, you can find several online, or you can get a free one from the city by visiting your city council district office. And no, it won't stink up your kitchen. They are designed to keep the smell of rotting food inside the box. I line mine with a paper bag and then dump it into my green bin twice a week. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Use the green bin. That's right. Sarah's always got the good tips about that. Okay, we got rain headed this way. And it's really tonight, Adam, where the threat is. Yeah, tonight, up until about 3 a.m. for San Antonio. I think after 3 a.m., our threat will have passed. And it's not going to be continuous. It's going to come and go and be scattered in nature across our area. We just had one shower uh, move through the west side of town. Now it's right up and down Highway 281 from Bulverde to Stone Oak and southward all the way down toward Palo Alto College, Somerset, and that's moving into Elmendorf. This is a light shower, but it's enough to stir things up outside and cause some wet roadways and a few slick spots. And now just with our latest radar scan, we've got a little downpour that's moving into China Grove and Boltville. So we're going to continue to see development with these as they move in from the west. We'll look at the stronger storms to the west in just a few minutes. Bear County's top criminal district court judge Ron Ron Hell says he is concerned about the conversations between the DA's office and Austin based criminal justice reform group, the Wren Collective. Sheriff Javier Salazar, who was mentioned in some of the 200 pages of text messages, sent DA Joe Gonzalez a letter asking Gonzalez to keep their conversations confidential. You can read the full story on KSAT.com. Alamo Ranch will soon get a new park. The county says the park will be its first in the Northwest. Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores says she wants to hear from people there about what they want to see on this piece of land. So far, she says the county has invested $3 million to try to get the plans rolling. It is finally fixed. An elevator that was broken for weeks at a public housing apartment for the elderly and disabled is working again. We first told you about this issue last week when we shared video of a man with a partial leg amputation pushing his wheelchair down the stairs. Opportunity Home San Antonio said supply chain issues made the fix take longer than expected. Residents were offered hotel rooms, but finally, the elevator is back up and running. I just do not ever think an elevator in a senior, elderly, disabled place like that should be down for weeks. Yeah, and that video was so hard for people to watch, so I'm yeah. glad glad it is fixed. Back up and running. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, uh, something else we might need to fix here. Let's address this. We've got what's Mr. Green Screen. What's going on behind you there? I don't think this is me. Okay, I was going to say, I'm going to go check my computer really quickly because there's a chance it's, it's operator error here, okay? Been there before. All right, anyway. You, you do have two, your hands full there. With, you yeah, know. they're a little full of stuff and, you know. Whatever, we're, we're, we're moving, we're moving full strength here. All right, let's talk about our primary storm threats tonight. In terms of any severe storms that pop up, the primary threat is going to be localized large hail. That's the moderate risk. And then a slightly lower risk of wind gusts of 60 miles per hour and even some flash flooding and the very off chance of a tornado. The, notice the rain here. I-10, 1604, the interchange near Crossroads, the droplets on the screen, the rain just moved through. That's the batch of rain I shared with you just a moment ago on the right side of your screen. A fairly light in nature, one moderate shower that just popped up near Boltville. But the heavier activity, more consistent rain is just off to the west. And this is 
more persistent rain in some some places this is stretching from Hondo moving into Castroville down to Divine and now moving into northwestern Atascosa County. We'll look at that again in one moment. I want to get to what was a severe thunderstorm in Brackettville now has since weakened a bit as it moves eastward, but this is still headed toward Uvalde. And it, that should make it to Uvalde at 714 PM. Concan, the rain is almost there. Concan, you're going to get it by 656 PM. And then as this continues to move along Highway 90, Sabinal, 731 PM. This batch of showers that stretches all the way up into the hill country. And we've seen a little bit of organization here up through Lakey and stretching into Kerr County as well. This is all heading eastward, but I want to talk a little bit more about this activity that's moving into Western Bear County. Switch radar sites for a better view of it. A little bit of lightning and thunder, nothing severe right now, but some heavy rainfall and some wet roads for sure. So this one batch of heavy rain moving into Castroville, that's going to make it eastward into, let's say, Highway 90 and 1604 at 7.08 p.m. Almo Ranch area you can expect this at 707 PM this is all headed eastward and even within 1604 and 410 we have some of these moderate showers from Windcrest to Kirby to Martinez to China Grove kind of a little appetizer of what we can expect later on this evening and into tonight from the scattered showers and thunderstorms that we're expecting. But you see how there's breaks in the action. That's what we'll continue to see in between some of these showers and thunderstorms. And we'll be tracking these live on the KSAT Weather Authority app and KSAT.com and as necessary uh, on air as well. I want to give you the big picture. We're not the only ones getting in on this action. This is a broad system. The Broad upper level low, big disturbance. It's causing some showers and storms stretching all the way up into North Texas. Now, this is going to be our last line. We've got these initial batches, then the last line moves in closer to midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So, this first batch and then another batch. The steering winds right here, the high winds aloft, really helping to get our dynamics going and really kickstart these showers and storms. So, I mentioned this first batch is kind of what we're seeing right now scattered in nature. Later on tonight, what's in West Texas is likely to move into the Hill Country at 11 p.m., Bear County at midnight, and then clear our area by 3 a.m. and sunshine all day tomorrow from sunrise to sunset, clear sky. Comfortable too. 53 in the morning, 70 in the afternoon, Sunday, sunny and gusty. We're talking wind gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour. So real deal winds on Sunday and then quiet as we get into next week. Okay, thank you, Adam. The buzz coming up next. Bridgerton in the buzz. A new season of Bridgerton is topping off the buzz tonight. Netflix has released a sneak peek of its upcoming season three. Yeah, this time around the series follows the love story between Penelope and Colin Bridgerton. Season three drops in two parts starting May 16th. Part two will release a month later. Bridgerton, one of Netflix's most popular shows. I've never seen it. Both season one and two are on Netflix top 10 watch shows. Other shows on that list are Wednesday. Seen that one. I've seen bits and pieces. Dahmer, haven't seen that one. The Queen's Gamut, oh, seen yeah, it. Good. Stranger Things, seen yeah. it. The Night Agent, seen it. And The Witcher, have not seen it. Haven't seen that. I watched an episode or two of Bridgerton, but not my speed. The University <laughs> of Arizona trying a new experiment. They have installed a camera overlooking the Tucson desert. The purpose here is to take one photo every single year for a thousand years. It's called the Millennium Camera. The creators hope it will help show the environment has changed over time and will... While we won't be around for the end product, it will hopefully inspire discussions about actions we can take to shape the future all the way till the last photo, which will be taken, by the way, in 3023. Who knows what the world will yeah. be like. Okay, so how much would you pay for a pair of used sneakers? Okay, well, these sneakers aren't just any old nasty old sneakers. They belonged to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Michael Jordan. These shoes were worn by the six-time NBA champ in each of his championships. Yeah, the lineup of shoes dubbed the Dynasty Collection up for auction at Sotheby's. Estimated they'll gather between seven and ten million dollars. I'm going to just stick with what I've got. For some old shoes. Yeah. We'll be right. 
Stronger storms crossing the border right now, and this is just south of Carrizo Springs, but Carrizo Springs, you're about to get clipped by the first little edge of that storm. I want to take you a little farther to the north. Nothing severe right now. The severe storm we had did weaken, but we're looking at this line here that's moving through the hill country headed to the east at about 40 miles per hour. Time that out for you. Comfort 743 p.m. Worrying at 755 Pipe Creek 757. Otherwise, a little bit of action moving into and through San Antonio.